Daughters of the Dust is not just the film that influenced Beyonce's Lemonade. It is the film that documented the Great Migration and a huge turning point in Hoodoo history. Let's get into it. Daughters of the Dust was directed by Julie Dash and released in 1991. The film was critically praised and well-received and awarded for its amazing cinematography that was done by Arthur Jaffa. Daughters of the Dust is set in 1901 on Ebo Landing, which is located on Daughter Island. Of course, I gotta send a special love and shout out to all my Gullah Geechee people. I love y'all dearly. For those of you who are not familiar with Gullah Geechee, please do your research. If you are into hoodoo, African spirituality, African American history, any of that, research the Gullah Geechee people. These are the Gullah Geechee territories that are located on the coast of South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. St. Helena Island is about right here. And Delta Island is located right here next to St. Helena Island. And this is actually me on St. Helena Island. This is what the island looks like today. Very reminiscent to Daughters of the Dust. Daughters of the Dust offers us a very detailed, beautiful, cinematic view of the holistic impact that the Great Migration had on the peasant family. For those of you who aren't familiar, the Great Migration occurred between 1910 and 1970, and it was the time period where a lot of African Americans were leaving the rural south to move to the north, the northwest, as well as the midwest and the west coast. So if you have any family members who left the South between 1910 and 1970 and they moved to New York, Chicago, California, anywhere in the North, Midwest, West Coast, you too were affected by the Great Migration and this film likely tells your family story too. The biggest conflict in the movie is centered around Nana Peasant, who is the matriarch of the family. She's concerned that the youth are going to leave home and they are not only going to forget about their rich, beautiful Gullah Geechee practices, but they're also going to forget their spiritual practices, which is essentially hoodoo. Some of the youth have already traveled mainland and have now returned home to say their final farewells as they plan to move permanently, and they have changed a lot. Baby Yellow Mary came home a free-flowing, queer, smex worker, okay? Child, she even came home with her partner who is a woman and done turned the family up. Yellow Mary's plan is to move to Nova Scotia with her partner. Then you got Viola who's the strict Christian, okay? She done went to the mainland and became a, a, a stunk Christian. Look, look at her, look at her. And one of the most powerful stories in the film is the story of Eli who was starting to doubt the power of hoodoo tradition after his wife Eula went into the mainland and was great by a white man and she's now with child. That unborn child that she's now pregnant with, he doesn't know if it's his and that child is also narrating this story. Yes, the entire film is narrated by that unborn child and she is telling us the story of her ancestors and elders. And the root of the film was hoodoo. Nana Peasant wanted the youth to remember the African spiritual practices that were preserved and passed down from generation to generation. In this scene, she is taking her hair and combining it with the hair of her mother to remind them that, look, these are the generations coming together. Remember us. Remember what we taught you. There's mojo bags. There's tinctures in the windows. There's bottle trees. There's all kind of stuff throughout this film. One of the most powerful scenes in Daughters of the Dust for me is the moment where Eli is expressing his doubt in hoodoo to Nana Peasant. And he's essentially saying, we used to believe in these practices, the rice in our pocket, the mojo bags, all of this. And if they really worked, why would this happen to my wife? Why would my wife be allowed to be hurt like this? How would my family be put in this situation? So essentially he's expressing his doubt. And his doubt manifests physically when he breaks his bottle tree. Now, bottle trees are an old hoodoo tradition where essentially bottles are placed on a tree outside of the home. And the intention of the bottle tree is to protect the home from negative energy. It's believed that when the bottle breaks, that means the negative energy has been released. So him breaking the bottle tree without fear is essentially him showing that he doesn't believe that it works. He's released the negative energies. Get into it. They with us. All the same. The ancestor and the world. Call on your ancestors, Eli. Let them guide. You need their squint. Eli, I need for you to make the family strong again. Like we used to be. How can you understand me and the way I feel? This happened to my wife. My wife! I don't feel like she's mine no more. When I look at her, I feel I don't even want her no more. You can't give back what you never own. You'll never belong to you. She marry you. Why didn't you protect us, Nana? Someone put the fix on me. Was it 
a ganja. A bad luck. A woody old soul too deep in the grave to give a damn about my wife and some stranger was riding her. When we was children, we really believed you could walk the good out of evil. We believe in the newsprint on the wall, your tree of glass jars and bottles, the rice you carry in your pockets. We believe in the frizzle hair chicken, the coins, the roots, and the flowers. We believe they will protect us. And we're believing we own our love. I ain't been scared of nothing. And no one. Because I knew. I knew my great grandmother have it all in her pocket. Yeah. Or could walk it up. Never forget who we is and how far we done come. <laughs> To ensure that Gullah Geechee culture and history was properly documented in the film, the director Julie Dash said she wanted to ensure that Nana Peasant was dressed in indigo. See, when a lot of folks think of the plantations in the South, they only think of cotton, but that's not accurate. For Gullah Geechee people, the cash crop was indigo and rice. So Nana Peasant's fingertips were dyed blue because when they would work the indigo, it would permanently dye their fingers indigo blue. Her dress and gown was dyed indigo because that was the indigo was used to dye clothing and many other things. There's also a paint color known as haint blue that people use to be able to keep negative energy away. That's an old hoodoo practice, painting your houses and your window panes hang blue to keep the negative energy away all of that was in this film she also kept the other cash crop rice in her pockets to attract wealth and abundance because it represented wealth and abundance that's where the tradition of throwing rice at weddings comes from you know how in west africa specifically nigeria when people get married they pour money all over them and throw money all, all over them well for us rice was our cash crop rice represented money so that's why we throw rice on newlyweds at weddings and it's very well known that Beyonce's Lemonade visuals, especially for songs like Love, Drought, and All Night, were heavily influenced by Daughters of the Dust. A lot of the shots and images and costumes from Daughters of the Dust like this, and this, and this, look a lot like this, and this. And let's be very clear, Julie Dash has expressed how grateful she is that Daughters of the Dust inspired Beyonce because it breathed new life into the film. A lot of people were looking her up, watching the film, and talking about the film again, which means that if they were talking about Gullah Geechee culture and hoodoo. Arthur Hoffa, who was the cinematographer, went on to work with Solange as well. Overall, Daughters of the Dust is really that girl when it comes to film, y'all. Go watch it. Much love.